We're back, people, and today we're breaking down film on Julian Hill, Miami Dolphins' newest undrafted tight end. Definitely an interesting skill set. He's very explosive. Definitely an F tight end, move tight end, H back, multiple different roles. He's just not like an inline Y type of guy, which the Dolphins have been really looking for this role, an F tight end. They didn't really have it last season. Like Gasecki played that role. Like Gasecki and Trent Sherfield kind of played a mixture of that role, but they didn't have like that true F that they're looking for that can block and be good after the catch. And I feel like that's what they really went for this season with Elijah Higgins. They did Julian Hill as an undrafted free agent and Tanner Connor last year. One of those guys is going to make the team and be like that main F. They have their three Ys and Smythe, Sauber, and Tyler Croft. But Hill, adding this offense, I like his explosiveness. He's tough to break down after the catch. He can stretch the field vertically. Very explosive player. He can run some routes. Now, I think he has the toughest chance to make the team out of the F tight ends. Uh, it's going to be a tough battle for him. A lot, obviously, he's an undrafted guy. A lot of guys struggle there. But him and Tanner Connor, I think, are very similar players. And Connor made the team last year. He's probably fighting Connor for the role, uh, to be honest, to make the team or at least be practice squad. I think he does have a chance there, but he moves well. Uh, this definitely seems like a Mike McDaniel type of guy, a player they would really like. He catches the ball well outside of his frame. Very fun player to watch, at least. Do I think he makes the team? I would give it an outside chance. Never say never, but uh, at least definitely want to take a look at him because he's an intriguing player with an interesting skill set that I think fits the Dolphins offense. Don't have a lot of clips because there wasn't a lot to show on YouTube. I have all 22, so I have seen him play a lot now. I just can't show the all 22 because uh, those clips tend to get copy striked or copyright striked. And uh, here we get to see him stretching the field vertically on a slot fade. You got to be able to, you know, attack the seam, attack the fade like this as an F tight end slot guy moving out there. He does a good job just exploding out of there. He starts off slow here. We'll go back and break this out a little more slowly. But he kind of slow plays this, gives a little bit of a hesitation. Drops that uh, head right there and then boom, explodes out of it. And like safety right there has like a big cushion. He's still able to explode by him there. Showing off that speed. He had he tested pretty well. Like he's undersized for a tight end. But I like his uh, build for the F tight end spot. Uh, pretty nice. Like Gaseki was too long and linky for that spot. And he doesn't add like much as a blocker on the move or as a, you know, a guy after the catch. But Julian Hill, that's kind of where he thrives. Obviously, he's not the player Gasecki is, but for the Dolphins offense, it's just a better fit. You know, him and Tanner Connor. Tanner Connor, very similar, but Tanner Connor played receiver in college, and they're both, you know, more receiving skill sets. But K Connor, big body, uh, they moved him to tight end as well. And, you know, I think him, Higgins, they're all going to be fighting. And obviously, as an outside shot, but like it's like Tanner Connor is a second year undrafted guy. Elijah Higgins, six round pick. So, like, their stock isn't much more. Like, they didn't put too much more. Uh, assets into them so if he really proves himself like in the preseason uh really stands out i think he has a chance to make the team very very comfortable attacking the seam from the slot just as soon as he gets past this linebacker you can see him snap his head around he understands uh when he's supposed to be there he has a good feel for these soft spots in the zone takes a really good angle as well because you're like running this seam seam bender once you recognize that it's like a too high safety look like the safety's not middle of the field middle of the field's open on your seam you want to bend it towards the middle right like this calling that a seam bender so really good understanding and now he's just in between like a triangle of defenders you know the hook curl guys and a deep half safety getting between all of them and uh picking up some nice yards there we'll show off some of his yak ability with a really nice clip later but yeah he's very comfortable attacking the seam gotta be able to do this as i have tight end it's not the most important thing in the dolphins offense they don't attack the seam a ton with the tight ends but i think with a guy having those types of skill set it's something they're more uh willing to do and i think in certain games they really did it more often there are some games where they never did it at all but i think when certain teams uh focus on hill and waddle and taking away the outside uh then they can attack the seams vertically with tight ends more often Really like this play you know it doesn't seem like anything too crazy sitting down you know sort of on that stick route but it shows off his fluidity and his ability to you know uh flip his hips and get up field after the catch look how he transitions like this is very important like flip your hips right here as you're catching it to flip your momentum up field you can see he's very comfortable like understands like the technical part of the game the nuance of it and then instantly explodes up field you can see the acceleration he gets out of this uh break very quickly like right after the catch instant acceleration he gets low he maintains very good pad level when he's running and it allows him to just pick up yards after the catch like a lot of times here when you're catching this and this ball gets thrown to your back shoulder a lot of tight ends are going to get tackled pretty quickly here because spinning around not of them are a lot of very fluid very explosive when they have to change directions like this but he does a great job of flipping his momentum shifting it upfield so he can instantly explode this guy doesn't even, isn't even able to get a little bit of hands on him and it allows him to you know pick up an extra five six yards 
really nice job there after the catch from Julian Hill. Here you can see Julian Hill working over the middle of the field. I wish we got more like man-to-man -man reps. Obviously, the first one was more man-to-man, off-man. I'd like to see him face some press, but there wasn't a ton to show, at least. Uh, I saw a little bit from the L22, and it wasn't too bad. Uh, blocking, I'm not going to be able to show as well, but I think as a blocker, he's um, better than I expected. It's not like top tier. I think, you know, when he goes against NFL talent, it won't be as anything crazy, but it's definitely a lot better than, you know, what they would have gotten from like Gusecki. He gives a lot more effort, and he clearly understands what he's trying to do. Uh, doesn't always win, but uh, pretty good job here running his route, getting over the middle, just finding the soft spot versus his zone, uh, breaking. Uh, could have been more smooth, maybe. Uh, he kind of floats it a little bit too far, takes a little wide angle here. But I like to see him at least working the middle of the field with confidence. This ball's thrown up uh, high away from his frame, and he's able to catch it. Like, he doesn't know. He could easily be hit here. He's very uh, fearless working the middle of the field. You got to be fearless as a tight end. Make those catch above the frame like that pretty good work uh would like to see some more like actual route running from him too like they just had him attack the seam a lot but i think that's something he can grow into it's just didn't see a ton of it at college the college level here we get to see man to man versus like a soft press nickel corner uh pretty good job on his release too and then finishing near the sideline like he actually gives you know a little bit of a move here gives him the split release uh then you know jab to the inside outside uh two-step release right here pretty nice Keeps this DB off balance, keeps him guessing, and then he's able to get a free release off the line, get on that outside track, then now lean into the DB, create that separation late, and then catch the ball away from your frame, get that knee inbound, you know, he so he has good field awareness. It's a third and 15 situation, so he couldn't waste too much time uh, getting out of his break. He's got to get down the field quickly before the QB can get sacked, and then catch this ball at the first down marker. Very impressive play, good uh, awareness. Good job beating press, so nice route running from a guy of his size. Very impressive stuff. Got to be able to beat DBs at the next level. I like his skill set. Like, if he really can translate it, I feel like or he can transition to the next level, play against higher competition, like Tanner, Tanner Connor did it. Like, they like to add those guys like him, Higgins, Connor. They're all going to be fighting for one of those spots. So we'll see how, you know, it works out for them. Last play, then we're breaking down. We got Connor here in the slot. This is his best uh, yard after catch type of play. Just sitting down. Uh, very important, like just being able to find a spot open versus zone. Teams run this all the time at the NFL level, and then you can just see him make people miss out in space. Very impressive play. So from start to finish, we'll watch this again a little more slowly here. Just finding the soft spot in the zone. He's recognizing where they are at. Sees him just sort of sitting there. So he sits down, slow plays it, finds it, and then you see him catch this. He's anticipating, like his eyes were already there, so he knows where he's going to be. He's anticipating where he's going where this linebacker is going to take his angle. And he's already ready to make him miss, even out of nowhere. Like, his feet are completely dead stopped right here. Like, look at his feet no, stopped, and he's still able to explode up the hill, uh, upfield vertically, freeze that guy, make him miss. He does a really good job of reducing surface area, like dipping his shoulders, making him a tough guy to hit, keeping his feet up. Like, look how low he gets. He braces for contact well, makes these guys miss. He's very fluid. And then, and out of this is what really impresses me. Like, a lot of the time when guys are um trying to make guys miss and they have to get like lower than they usually are uh their speed slows down they are not as explosive but he gets out very quickly from those situations instantly gets that stiff arm out making another guy miss picking up your feet when guys dive at your feet as a bigger guy a lot of times they get tripped up but he's a great job just continuing to make people miss run this guy over for an extra few yards really impressive work like love this high level athleticism out of julian hill here uh just I keep almost calling him Julian Campbell because he played at Campbell, but it's Julian Hill. And uh, so, yeah, but just really impressive stuff. Got to be able, like, in this offense, yards after catch is everything for the tight end position. And, like, like if you watch the Niners, they obviously have George Kittle. He's out of this world, like, that perfect fit for this offense that you're looking for. And I think when it comes to the Dolphins offense, they don't have that type of player. They're obviously not going to have a George Kittle type, but just someone that has a similar skill set to him. I think that's what they're trying to find for this offense because – Obviously, Gusecki wasn't that type of player, but if they add someone that has that set, sort of skill set that can be used to just sit over the middle of the field, find these soft spots for zone because they face a lot of zone coverage, um, be a little more check down options for Tua because with what Hill and Waddle can do pushing the field vertically and like knowing what they do in the RPO, they love to get the ball out quickly in the flat sometimes their tight ends. If they have a guy that can give you a little more after the catch than what they had this past season, I really think that unlocks something special for this offense. And hopefully they can find that with one of their tight ends, whether that be Hill, Connor, Higgins. 
And then obviously I think Smythe, Sobert, and Croft are all better after the catch than Gusecki was. And they're going to be used in those situations as well. But they're going to be a little more in line. Uh, not as explosive types. I mean, Smith, Smythe will definitely be uh, the tight end one in my opinion. And I think Sobert has a chance to be uh, a solid tight end too as well. Because he's a very quality blocker. So for this team... Uh, hopefully, Julian Hill gets a chance. I want to see him play some preseason games for sure. He's a fun, explosive player. So if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe.